Good, <coughs> excuse me. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode 739, and the topic today is about judgment versus discernment, and how to which you're using in your relationships. And I'll give you some very obvious clues and some subtle ones too, because you may already know the answer you think to this, but I suspect there might be some ideas I'll suggest that will go deeper than you anticipated. It's a tall order. I'm not sure if I'll fulfill, fulfill it, but I'll do my best. Before I jump into the topic and explain more about it, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks. There is a reason behind this. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That informs my work and it also inspired these talks over two years ago now called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. Um, and today we're at episode 739, so the numbers keep coming, or well, hits keep coming. And today we're going to talk about judgment versus discernment. And even though I'm going to use it specifically in the area of relationships, at least I think I am, this applies to every area of your life, because if you figure out and how to use these more effectively, first of all it's going to be a shift from your head to your heart, as you'll probably guess, but also it means you'll respond and interact with life in a whole different way. And that's the place where I start, actually. Because the thing about judgment versus discernment is one of them is response, one of them is reaction. And it's talked about reaction and response last week in a different theme, but I'm going to bring it back again here. So, and, and um, let, me, let me say broad strokes. Dis I don't want, I don't want to <laughs> it's like I had that title so clear, and then I'm going to figure out how's it going to break it down. All right. Simply put, Judgment is usually used in a negative way. There is there is, there are positive judgments I know, but I'm talking about judgment as a negative, limiting discussion, and usually it's head centric. Discernment can also be head centric, but it's more intuitive, intuitively based, which to me, when you talk about intuition, is about heart, not head. So discernment, I believe, is more connected to a place of loving, a place of trust, a place of intuition. That being the defining line or the defining cutoff point and you will see that visually which I'm never good at doing, well, no, I haven't been good at doing that on camera the way that you make your relationships harder to be around and more challenging to be in is when you judge everything including yourself and the challenge with judging because unfortunately this culture, well the, ch the challenge with it is this culture pervades, promotes and expresses judgment everywhere so it's almost default subconscious that we do judgment it's the thing that I've been working with fighting fighting with at times yes aligning in a different way with for quite a long time and it's been a journey that continues to teach, teach me how to be better at doing this because it isn't like flick the switch and you're good to go everything's, everything's fine no it's much more um, nuanced than that so in the conversation about judgment versus discernment I'm really speaking to the idea about do you react and and object to things negatively or do you respond by looking at things and just seeing does this fit or not like evaluation because the difference between judgment and and discernment is judgment is really blatantly right wrong that's bad judge it horrible don't like it discernment is really evaluating good or bad from place of a kind of um how do i say from a, place, from a place of compassion first of all from a place of love, because when you discern, you're really refining your choice points. And it sounds like it's just wordplay, but I'm really speaking to this from a point of view of the energetics behind it. Because again, judgment and discernment are rooted in different places energetically. Judgment is more, again, mindset level, which is usually ego-centric based, whereas discernment is more heart and intuitive, intu intuitively based. Try one again, intuition based. And having that evaluation shift from interesting evaluation dropped in there having a shift from judgment to discernment gives you a whole new perspective on relationships all relationships especially ones with family by the way <laughs> should I go down that path I might touch into that later on basically in our lives we have lots of different relationships that impinge impact and influence our, self, our, our beingness and some of those relationships are Not that one alone. Some of those relationships are just painful to be around. Let's put it simply like that. Some of them are actually a lot easier and more relaxed and more fun, more light, more loving, etc. 
But some of the relationships that stick more for us, especially family relationships, since I'm going to go there again, are toxic. They're based on, on a relationship interaction that is either painful, hurtful, abusive, toxic, dysfunctional, hard, I want to say hard to be around is another way of saying it. But basically what it comes back to is it's a place you judge. It's almost no choice because you're in a place where the pain is great enough that it's hard to make a discerning choice because discern's not a, place, a discerning choice is usually not made from a place of pain, reaction, upset, distortion. Discernment is made from a place, as again, of intuition from heart. And if you've got relationships that are pushing on you so hard that you cannot, cannot think for yourself, interestingly enough, you cannot think for yourself, okay, you're going to be in reactive mode, which again puts you in a place of judgment. So understanding the difference between judgment and discernment is a cho choice between entrapment and freedom. I'm giving you all these either ors because I really want to make sure you get the point about when you put your energy into not judging, because this is the thing I'll give you, is the big piece of this, is when you can be in any relationship around you, whether it's family, romantic, um, people you see in the media, be it uh, entertainment or political or something else, your ability to stop jumping immediately into reaction, the ability for you to actually just stop and stay centered, to then choose to be discerning, to evaluate how you want to respond. These are all choice points, every single one of those. Evaluation is a response that is, sorry, evaluation is a choice that is a res to respond. Responding is a choice versus reacting, because reacting is almost without choice. So you can go down the path, which a lot of people do, especially in the political arena, where they're in judgment and reaction all the time. Or you can be more elevated in your own awareness by being discerning and responsive, which are both places you choose to move from when you're ready. Big difference. And it's that understanding of, of difference between reactivity and no choice to the place of responsiveness and freedom of choice that can change your life and every interaction. So I want to play that one a little bit. Because the direction I'm encouraging you, and that's the thing I talk about a lot in my work, is helping you give back your freedom of choice in your relationships, in all relationships. And having that power, because it is a power, will shift how you enjoy life itself. And it sounds all very matter of fact, and if you have a job that you have to go to nine to five, or you don't feel you have any choice in that, well, there's two things on that. First of all, you can always choose to leave. That's true of any relationship. Ultimately, family dynamics not so easy, but you can certainly move to a place where you don't have to talk to them all the time. So you can choose to take care of yourself by removing yourself. One proviso that you're not using it as a means to avoid. Because I do recommend that you do have resolution in relationships, be it family or romantic or anything else. So running away can be a safety choice, but as long as you don't stay running away, that you actually do work towards resolution. The other part of this place of being in a, pla a place of self-honoring choices is that when you are raising your own standards and becoming responsive and being able to evaluate what's happening around you, you get your power back. And the power that you gain is one that supports you being more aligned, more authentic, and more true to yourself. And choosing, having choice, having freedom to choose in your life. Oh, sorry, I've dropped, I dropped, that was where I went. I knew it was a second piece. Come back to this one in a minute. That thing about being a job you hate. The cho two choices. One choice is to leave. The second choice I forgot to talk about is an attitude. This is a thing that actually goes back to Viktor Frankl's work. Um, in A Man's Search for Meaning, he talks about choice as the level of how you choose to um, be in a situation. So if you're in a job that you hate, you have a choice about how you interact. You can be resentful, reactive, judging, and everything else. Or you can be as centered as you want to be, your choice. What happens in your job no longer actually impinges on you. It's almost like you have this um, flotation device, so to speak, that floats you above all that muck and mire of judgment that sits at the bottom of the, on the floor. So, because energetically it's a lower vibration, so it feels like it's sitting on the floor. So when you are in a place of, of responsibility and responsiveness and choice points, then your ability to be in life is very much elevated out of that pit, so to speak. I know I'm jumping around my metaphors, hope that makes sense though. One reason I'm talking about this is because I'm, I want to speak about the fact that we forget to choose, we forget to evaluate, we tend to be so reactive and 
judgmental versus responsive, that it's time, I think, to shift that. Because the more we can be responsive, the more freedom we have in everything we do. If you went through your day fully embracing your autonomy to choose and respond how you wish to, your life would be very different than it probably is today. Because I would guarantee that if you live in this world, almost everybody has certain things they react to. And it may not be reacting to somebody else. It may be reacting to circumstances, situations. Maybe you react to the food you have to eat. Maybe you react to the, the, the walking out into the street and the environment you live in. Maybe you react to the sound of the birds in the morning. Maybe you re react to the sound of fireworks that have been going off. That's, and that, and that's, that's happening a lot in my neighborhood at the moment. So this tool, this teaching I'm talking about, is applicable to every area of your life. And it can change your life. It's part of my work in my coaching. It's also part of my Coming Home to Yourself course that I've talked about before, and I'm gonna put the link in the comments again. Because when you learn how to come home to yourself and your self-esteem, self-support, and your self-alignment um, practices are really, really in alignment, you become much more free to choose from a healthier place, which I keep talking about. And for some of you out there, you've been pining for this, crying for this, wanting this, this will help you. So the link can be in the comments for my Coming Home to Yourself um, data sheet, I call it that, it's a page we can read about it, there's a link there on this, schedule a talk with me about it afterwards. It's something that I really believe in, that we all have freedom to choose, and making that choice in this moment for yourself, making this choice in this moment to love yourself, and making the choice in this moment to turn off the reactivity to what's happening around you, will change your life completely. This is big work, I know. And it's something that sounds so simple when I put it into a little, what is it, 10, 12 minute video? It takes a bit more practice. And I say, I've been working on this for a long time and I'm still playing with it. It's still a dance that I have with re response versus reactivity and it's not something I'm necessarily 100% um, perfect at. So I'm telling myself this as well as I'm telling you. So it's been of value to you. If you wanna find out more about my, my work, my, co my coaching as well, I'll put a link in the comments for a chat so you can sign up for a discovery session a complimentary one with me. And again, I'll put a link in the comments for the Coming Home to Yourself so you check it out because it will help you. Um, but above all else, and above all else, watch how your life is unfolding and watch how you interact with people around you and with things around you, whether it's emails or texts or people or interactions. Do you come from a place of responsiveness and intuition or a reactivity and judgment? You have the choice. The better at, you, better at it you get, the better at it your life becomes. So I'm encouraging you to do what it takes to raise your bar, to lift yourself up, to be more evaluative versus judgmental, and to learn how to respond from a place of choice from heart versus reactivity from judgment, limitation, and thought. I'm not saying thought's a bad thing, but in this context, it fits that way. I think I've made my point. This is kind of the biggest part of the work for some of us, is to really learn how to release the judgments and the, su and, the, and the suffering we create for ourselves because we don't know how to love ourselves enough to forgive ourselves. Forgiveness, by the way, is one of the antidotes to judgment. That's also in my course. Um, I think that's about it. I hope it's been of value to you, to teach you something, to inspire you with something, maybe to remind you of something, because you probably already know about this. And if you do want to get some more support, again, I'll put links in the comments so you can check out my um, my new course coming home to yourself and also working with me as a coach i hate that term coach i'm see i'm judging that <laughs> i don't have a term yet to replace it so i'm using the word coaches because you understand what that means at least i think you do what i do is a different level i just haven't found the right term for it and coach is a word that i find myself not enjoying let me be honest um anyway enough of that so thanks for watching i appreciate you being with me if you haven't seen my broadcast before i do this every day at 5 p.m pacific time on my personal page on facebook I also do this, um, I put this in replays onto my personal business page on Facebook and also onto YouTube, so I'll give you the links. So if you want to join me live, find me at 5 p.m. Pacific time here on Facebook at Barry Selby, facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Please interact, you can put comments, questions, thoughts below if you want, either now or in the replays. Um, the replays goes to my business page, where you can find them more easily since my business page is primarily these. So if you go to barryselby.author on Facebook, you can uh, like that page, that'd be wonderful, I appreciate that. And thirdly, the replay is going to my YouTube channel just for safekeeping and for a different way of looking at my talks. 
and you can find them at uh, Barry Selby's The Channel. Please subscribe, and, you, and Messages for the Masculine is the playlist. And with that, I thank you for watching. I hope this has been of value to you. If you want to share it out with somebody, feel free to do that. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below. And uh, keep looking for ways to take care of yourself. One of these, this is one of them. So I hope this has been of help to you. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.